Hi, my name is Eric Wolf, and I'm one of the co-founders of Airwolf 3D. As many of you know, since 2012, we've been designing, manufacturing, and selling 3D printers in America. I am here today to talk with you about how to make large ABS parts. I, like many of you, as engineers and designers, like working with ABS because it holds a constant form over time, it has a nice appearance, and it's easily workable. But, as many of you know, printing large ABS parts can be tricky. Over the past six years, we've gained a lot of knowledge in this field, and would like to share that knowledge with you in a six-part series. Number one, it is absolutely mandatory when printing with ABS to use an enclosed build environment. This is because of the phenomena of thermal contraction of the ABS filament. After your filament is printed at say 240 C, if you have an open environment, that filament can quickly cool down to the surrounding temperature of the room, which may be 20 to 30 C. It's a very large temperature differential that can cause problems in the part. Namely, you can have layer delamination because of the thermal contraction. So enclosing that build environment tends to keep more of the heat inside the chamber to counteract or at least slow down the process of thermal contraction. An enclosed build environment also tends to contain a lot of the ABS odors. With the EVO series, we've gone a step further and included a HEPA and carbon air filtration system, which also contains the emissions in the chamber. Number two, a powerful heated build plate is your friend, and it's critical when you're printing large ABS parts. We find that when printing parts larger than, say, about 10 inches in diameter, having the heated build plate at 135C or above tends to help dramatically to avoid the warpage that you get on the bottom of these large ABS parts. Now when we're printing very, very large parts, let's say 12 by 12 inch in diameter over 50 hours, we'll increase the bed temperature to at least 150 C to make sure we get that solid foundation for the 3D printed part. Now when you want to go over 120 C or so though, it gets very power intensive for your 3D printer. So for that, for the EVO and the EVO 22, we use 1000 watt power supplies to adequately power these beds. Number three, adding heat to the chamber is crucial for large ABS parts. At Airwolf, we print thousands of large ABS parts and find that when printing say eight inches or more in height, the chamber temp starts to play a very important role in the part quality. If the chamber temp is not warm enough, we can see cracks developing in those parts. Now this phenomenon starts to happen at about 50 C or lower in the chamber. So the best practice is to use a chamber heater to increase the temperature more than 50 C. And with polycarbonate parts, we go even hotter. Now with the EVO and the EVO 22, we've designed temperature controlled chamber heaters for just that reason. Number four, surface adhesion. And this goes for nearly any part you will make out of any material. Surface adhesion is a foundation or requirement of a large ABS part. As we started Airwolf by using 3D printers to 3D print more 3D printers, we ran into this issue right away. We needed to find a reliable way to couple the part to the build surface. That's why we invented Wolfbite for ABS and variants of Wolfbite for nearly every other material. Without appropriate surface adhesion, there's simply no way to make parts larger than a couple inches without them warping or even worse, falling off the bed. So Wolfbite in particular adheres the part to the build surface when the build surface is hot. And then after the print is completed, the part releases from the build surface as it cools. Let's talk about nozzle diameter. Printing large parts takes time and it uses a lot of filament. As a matter of fact, we frequently use over five pounds of ABS at a time. I think we can all agree that the faster we complete these large parts, 
the better. So here, we actually speed up the process of printing, not by increasing the gantry speed to unreasonable numbers. We increase that speed by enlarging the nozzle diameter. For both the EVO and the EVO 22, we have as optional 1.0 millimeter nozzles. Now, the standard nozzle being a 0.5 or even in some cases a 0.35, you may think, well, that's not a very large difference. But it may be surprising for you to know that as the radius of the nozzle increases, the surface area actually increases by the square. So in other words, a 1.0 millimeter nozzle will have about six times the throughput of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And I don't have to tell you that increasing your print speed by a factor of six is a major advantage on these long prints, such as the Rook, which I'm about to show you, which took 50 hours and used almost eight pounds of material. Now we printed that Rook at moderate print speeds, less than 60 millimeters a second, but it was able to accomplish this feat because we have large wall thicknesses and large layer heights. The layer heights were actually greater than 0.3 millimeters. Another benefit of that large nozzle size is as the wall thickness increases, the strength of the part increases also, and you have less chance of cracking in the part. So we have a stronger part, we have a better surface finish, and we're printing a lot quicker than we would have with a smaller nozzle. Number six, have a backup in case your part fails. Like everything else, large parts can fail. If you have a power outage, you run out of filament, or maybe some of that cheap filament you bought online jams your printer. So for this, you should use a system with the ability to back up the printing process somehow. Here, we combat the problem with software. We've designed our touchscreen and our own Genesis microcontroller to take account for either situation, be it losing electricity in the printer or having to run out of filament. You can simply follow the instructions on the touchscreen to restart your part. This is much simpler and less expensive and frankly less cumbersome than having a large battery backup system. As the EVO and EVO 22 are capable of drawing a lot of power, those battery backup systems can be overwhelming. So in conclusion, I hope these six tips will help you have success in printing large ABS parts. To download our guide, Six Things You Should Know About 3D Printing Large ABS Parts, go to airwolf3d.com backslash data. And if you have any questions, comments, or you would like to see any more videos or topics covered, we would be happy to do so. Feel free to contact us for more information at info at airwolf3d.com.